Today I'm going to be replacing this rope to chain splice. So the one that's done here is typically seen on ropes that are more than three lays. So ones that are four, eight, twelve, the larger ones. The reason is you can't actually do a nice clean back splice in that'll still pass through the windlass. So then you're forced to braid it through the rope. So this works. The only problem is this section of chain is then a bit stiffer and you can see the links aren't perfectly straight and then that can make the gypsy skip and then you'll have problems when you're at the rope to chain splice. So we're going to be replacing this with a three lay rope to chain splice where none of the chain is affected and the splice happens completely and entirely here at the bottom. Okay, now we're just going to get all this rope out of here. Now if you're working with brand new rope, you're going to have issues where the rope's going to try and come unlaid. You can try and stiffen it up with things like hairspray or salt water, stuff like that, but it's going to be a little trickier. When you're working with an older rope, especially one that's been in salt water, it's a lot easier because the rope kind of holds its own and it holds its shape. Okay, so now we have the last link here and then the rope. So the first thing we need to do is set aside two feet of rope minimum and that's going to serve as the splice. So we're going to work from here. So I'm just going to unlay this rope and then we'll start the splice. bring this one over and then these two we're going to pass through the last link here. And now we're going to take this first strand and we're going to name them. So this will be the first, this will be the second and this will be the third strand. So the second and first strand are going to be interlaced. So what we're going to do is we're going to unlay the first strand from the rope and we're going to lay in the second strand into its groove. Now that we're getting near the end, so now we're going to end it by tying an overhand knot right here and that'll lock those two down and then we take these two tails and we're just going to splice them back into the line. And as we splice them we're going to go tapering them, that way it's a smooth transition from just the virgin rope to the splice to virgin rope again. So after that first tuck, we'll do the second. Okay, so now it's got two tucks. We're going to pull out these strands and then start tapering. So we're going to cut off a couple and I'm going to cut them from the underside. That way the next tuck that happens will help tie them all in together. So we'll take three strands from the bottom here. We'll just cut those off. Now the minimum number of tucks that you can do is five. Seven is better. I'm personally going to do more than seven because being how this is an anchor line and it's under a lot of stress whenever it's put out this far. It means that the weather's not that good. So we want it extra strong. So therefore we're gonna tuck it simply until this whole tail is done. Okay, so now we have the first part done. You can see it's a very small and gradual transition from virgin rope to where the splice is and then back to normal again. 
So now we have this part done. So two of the three strands are taken care of, but we still have that third strand. And what do we do with this guy? Well, you're gonna need a fid, and this is the only actual tool you're gonna need for the whole process. So you're gonna put the fid between the rope and the chain link, and you need to have a fid space there. This is a 3 16th inch fid, so it's a very small one, but if you don't have that there, the chain, it, it's stuck, and it gets bound on the rope, and it can't wiggle or anything. And then what ends up happening is that at the junction from the rope to the chain, if it's not perfectly in line, it's going to cause the same problem of skipping at the windlass. As far as chafe goes, there's no difference if you have it really tight on the link, or if you have it with a little bit of a gap because the link is still gonna shimmy around in there a little bit and cause chafe. So you have to keep an eye on this area to make sure it's not chafing because if it chafes through, then your anchor road is gonna part. So you have to make sure that that stays in good shape. So we're gonna take this last strand here and we pull it out and now we're gonna come in the opposite direction. Now the reason that I run them both in the same direction the first time is simply so that passes through the chain easier because at that point you're just getting the chain you're just getting the rope looped through the chain and then doing a back splice so now we're going to do this guy's splice so you pass it through the chain and then you come back through itself so you're creating a half hitch right here and then we just put the fit in there to keep the space and now this one we're going to tighten down as tight as we can but against the fid. So we're maintaining that fid space in there. That way it doesn't get too tight on the chain. And now that we have it tied on here just with a simple half hitch, we're just gonna splice it back in. Now you want to make sure that all the yarns are pulling nice and tight here. That we have a nice tight splice. We've got a couple tucks in there. I'm just going to pull these yarns apart. We're going to cut out two of them. We're just going to start tapering it now. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.